Everyone knows the story of the T-34 and T-3485, but during the final stages of World War II, a lesser known project was underway. This project would lead to one of the only failed variants of the T-34, the T-34-100. Throughout history, there have been countless tanks, all designed to kill. But not all have been a success. What happened to the ones that never made it, and why did they fail? My name is Konovar. Join me as we journey through time, uncovering failed projects and forgotten creations in Cursed by Design. The year was 1944, and the war on the Eastern Front raged on. With the arrival of the Panther and Tiger IIs, it became clear that the 85mm armed T-34s were beginning to become more limited against these well-protected machines. So it was decided to try to find a way to upgun the tank further. Work reportedly began in Factory Number 183, and engineers set to work attempting to find a way to fit one of the larger guns the Soviets already had into the T-34. Early work was focused on trying to mount a larger version of the ZIS S-53, designated the ZIS-100, into the available turret from the T-3485. But it quickly became clear that the increased recoil from the bigger gun would be too much for the turret couplings to handle, as well as causing other issues with other parts of the tank. Another rumored idea consisted of mounting an IS-2 turret to the tank, but this was reportedly also discarded due to the inability to mate the turret ring to the much wider turret. This is when our next player enters the stage, the T-44. Being developed at the same time as the attempted modifications, the in-development turret that would eventually be used on the T-44 offered a tantalizing solution. This was not without trade-offs though, since the T-34 would need to be modified to allow the mounting of this new turret. This modification involved increasing the turret diameter from 1600mm to 1700mm, and also caused the lower hull floor to be reduced to compensate for the added weight from these changes. The bow machine gun was also removed, and with it the hull machine gunner was eliminated, dropping the crew count to only 4. Although this was a more promising concept, during testing, once again, both the previously mentioned ZIS-100 and the D-10T used on the SU-100 were found to be unfavorable in performance. Finally, in mid-1945, a usable armament was found in the new LB-1 100mm cannon, and the final version of the T-34-100 was assembled using this improved gun. Sadly, Despite finally having found a working design, this would be the end for the Soviet project to mount a 100mm, with no production ordered. With the war ending, there was simply no longer a need for an upgunned T-34, as the resources could be better spent on the new T-44 and eventually the T-54, which would become the most produced tank in the world. However, you may have noticed I said the end of the Soviet project, because this would not be the last time a T-34-100 was attempted. The next nation to try their hand at upgunning the faithful old T-34 were the Czechs in the mid-50s, with plans to start production of said tank in 1955. However, this never came to fruition. This tank would likely have resembled the Russian T-34-100 quite closely with a modified turret to fit the bigger gun, but as with its Soviet cousin, the project was not moved to production although you can still find this vehicle in the Czechoslovakian tech tree in World of Tanks. It was not only the Czechs who would attempt this, however. Almost two decades later, the Egyptian military would produce their rendition of the T-34-100, this time calling it the T-100. The Egyptians took a much different route with their design, however. Rather than previous designs, this would not be small changes made to the turret to accommodate the larger caliber. The gun chosen was the Soviet 100mm BS-3, and although the general turret shape can still be made out, the changes were immense. To help combat the recoil, the gun was fitted with a muzzle brake, as well as more recoil dampeners mounted below the barrel on the turret front. This tank, however, was not just a prototype. 
An estimated 100 units were produced and saw action during the 1973 Yom Kippur War against Israel. These tanks were later further modified to mount an even bigger 122mm gun. But that's a topic for another time. And with that, the story of the T-34-100, what could be considered the forgotten variant of the T-34, comes to an end. Thank you all so much for watching, and I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to like this video and subscribe if you want to see more. I would also like to thank my YouTube members for helping pick this tank for this video. If you'd like to decide future topics for this series, please consider joining my members by using the link in the bottom of the description or by clicking the join button. And stay tuned for my upcoming video guide on how to use this tank in War Thunder.